All right, guys, welcome to another lesson in the Hornet. And this is going to be a basic ILS introduction. So I did my last video. I realized some people may not be completely familiar with what an ILS system is and how to use it in the uh, F-18 Hornet. So we're going to go through that real quick. We're inbound to uh, Kadena Airport. And uh, first thing we're going to do is set up our radio. Uh, so we're going to go one on the upfront controller. And if you just select the frequency here, first of all, we have 57 on the TAC can. Hit enter. And then 10870 is the ILS frequency. You can look it up in the documentation. Or just look up Kadena uh, in the documentation. It'll have all the ILS frequencies and TAC in frequencies. And then you want to put your actual runway magnetic course. Now, these things change. Uh, but right now, for our purposes, if you're unsure, just put the runway number. Uh, in this case, we're, we're landing on runway 19, so 191 is actually the uh, magnetic heading. And hit Enter. So once that's in, you want to power the ILS on. We'll hit 1, and then if you click this little button right here, if you right-click, it'll turn it off. Right-click, that's just the power to turn it on. And then the last thing you want to do is uh, go down here. And if you hit the I key, you'll see this little thing cycle right here. Now we can either follow a TAC in. We can follow our navigation waypoints, which are exactly the same as what you see on the uh, HSD here. Uh, or you can do a combination. You can either do navigation and ILS, which on your HUD you'll see the... Uh, actually, we're kind of in a weird mode right now. You'll see the ILS. See those bars right there? Those are the ILS bars. This is indicating that we're not picking up anything just yet. But if I hit I again we can switch over to uh, TACAN ILS. So that means we're going to be tracking the TACAN. This little arrow is the TACAN indicator. And it's just pointing to where the airport is. Um, we set the TACAN at 57 X-ray right here, which is Kadena. And that little arrow right there, as long as this is in TACAN mode, TCN, that little arrow is going to point toward where, towards where the airport is. And then here's the mileage to the airport. All right, so since we want both TACAN and ILS, Let's go ahead and hit I, and we're going to select TACAN and ILS. So we still get the uh, the DME, or the distance measuring equipment, which is 20 miles to the airport, and a little arrow pointing towards the airport, but we also get the needles up here. All right, and everything's good to go. So let's go ahead and uh, call in the tower. We're going to actually uh, do a couple things before we do that. First, let's do a wind check. Hornet 1-1, one, one, Kadena Tower, one eight zero two three knots. All right, 180 at 23, which is basically what my INS is picking up roughly from the south at about 20 something knots gusting. And then uh, we'll hit T again and let's request our. Hornet 1, Kadena Tower 2907. So we're going to request our altimeter. And in case you didn't see, that's T, T, and then 1 will give you the uh, barometric pressure. So that number she gave is 29107. We just want to enter that into the uh, altimeter here. And that's going to make sure that our, altim our altimeter, altimeter <laughs> is calibrated for the pressure at the airfield. So we don't get an uh, inaccurate reading. So once you are 20 miles in, uh, we're within 11 miles right now. Okay. I'm going to disable the autopilot. We're going to request ATC vectors. And follow the directions. Hornet, one, two, inbound for landing. Hornet 1-1, one, one, descend to 4,000, maintain 300 zero, zero knots, turn right heading 200. Zero, zero. Down to 4,000, right to 200. Uh, Hornet 1-4, inbound for landing. Hornet 1-4, descend to 250 knots, turn left heading 100. Zero, zero. So I just got to pay attention to my call Altitude. sign, Hornet 1-1. One, one. I'm going down 4,000 feet. I know my altimeter is accurate because it's been calibrated to the uh, airfield elevation or airfield pressure. And I'm just making a right turn over to 200. I'm start my level out here. First 5,000. Just doing a scan. And we're 400 knots. So I'm just descending, you know, five down the ladder is a nice, easy descent rate. You know, you can kind of see where your descent rate right here, which is 3,000 feet per minute. There's 3,000, 4,300. You know, by far, the when you're descending, the most important thing is is your uh, altimeter, as well as your, your attitude indicator is always in the middle of your scan. 
uh, in this case, you know, on the HUD, my attitude indicator just shows my the relation of my aircraft's nose to the horizon. So let's click the uh, wind correction off. Maintain three zero zero knots. Turn right, heading two two zero. Right to two two zero. One one one. So she wants me at three hundred knots. So I'm going to go right to two two zero, and that's the heading. And I'm slowing down to three hundred knots, just like she wants me to. There we go. Nice and level on the horizon, and we're just trying to maintain our. Uh, Hornet one one descend to four thousand. Maintain two five zero knots. Turn left heading zero four five. Runway one niner. Left to zero four five. Runway one niner. One one. I think that call was for me. And we'll keep pushing here. If not, she'll give me another vector and and she'll correct us. I see some land over there, but you know, again, you don't want to use the outside heading or outside references. You just want to maintain uh, good scan on your instruments. So airspeed, uh, attitude indicator, which in this case is just your HUD uh, horizon line there, and then of course your uh, your heading and your altitude. Just 300, 4,000 feet. One, one, maintain three zero zero knots. Turn left heading zero two zero. Left to zero two zero point one one. So, 300 knots. Left to zero two zero and 4,000 feet. We're seeing some trees out there. This new BMS scenery looks outstanding, by the way. Thank you guys for the devs and all of the uh, contributors for helping out. So the reason I'm doing this in conjunction with ATC vectors, vectors are just guidelines given to you by your traffic control to try to get you in the vicinity of the airport. And of course, you still use your ILS, you still use other things uh, to get yourself down, you know, depending on what, what type of approach you'd like to do. But the, uh, the ATC, it's keeping you away from other aircraft. It's also getting you in the vicinity of the aircraft. So use all the tools at your, at your uh, disposal. BMS does a great job of modeling uh, air traffic control vectors so you use that and you can see the needles have activated now this vertical line here is your what's called your localizer and that lines you up with the uh, corresponding runway as long as our course is correct which it's zero one or one nine one which it is and actually that's that has to do with the tack in so if we hit one here you'll see uh... one nine one there for the runway heading as long as that's correct, Hornet one one turn right heading zero three five runway one nine -er. Right to zero three five runway one nine -er. I'm not sure why she said runway one nine -er, but I guess she's vectoring me towards runway one nine -er here. Um, so that vertical line is your is going to indicate where the uh, runway is, and then the horizontal line there it indicates. Hornet Our one glide one slope. descend to four thousand. Maintain three zero zero knots. Turn left heading zero one five. Vectors to right base. Runway one nine. Left to zero one five one one. She did say left turn, right? Sorry, I'm trying to narrate and follow these vectors at the same time. Um so you can see that she say zero she did say zero one five I overshot that that's all right if you overshoot something uh it's okay you know just make the correction don't don't freak out just make the correction Hornet one one on turn right heading zero six zero right to zero six zero point one I'm gonna slow down a little bit because we're getting fast. So you use uh, Hornet one one descend to three thousand maintain three zero zero knots three zero zero knots down to three thousand Hornet one one it's right, so just a little bit lower here and we're gonna slow down to uh, 
300 knots, 060 on the heading. So you just juggle those those things, keep an instrument scan. So, you know, a good scan is uh, attitude, indicator, horizon, airspeed, horizon, uh, heading, horizon, altimeter, horizon. Maintain 300 knots, turn right heading 095, sectors to final, runway 195. Now you see that little circle that popped up just below horizon? That little tiny circle. If we put our flight path indicator, and I'm going to pause it for just a second here. If we put our flight path indicator, which is this big thing, FPI, or sometimes it's called the uh, vertical uh, velocity indicator. If we put our flight path indicator right on that circle, and we're on final approach to the runway, which we're not. We still have to make a right turn. Because remember, the airport is to our right, according to the TACAN, it's seven miles to our right, somewhere down there. We can't see it. Um, when we make this right turn, and we get lined up, semi-lined up with the runway, if we put our flight path marker over that circle, like right over it, it will give us a uh, longitudinal you know, Hornet, it'll one line one us up. Descend to 2000, vectors to final, runway one runner. Down to 2000, runway one. It'll give us vectors, uh, excuse me, it'll line us up with the runway. So let's just put that in practice. She wants us down to 2000. And the needles are active. If they're not centered, if they're not glued to your flight path indicator, Hornet, one that one means they are right active. Final approach course, one nine or zero. Check approach speed. Turn right to 190.1.1. Now we're picking up glide slope as you can see. A little bit of thunder out there. So 090 is where she wants us. There we go. Let me make sure I'm tack on ILS mode, which I am. Alright, so you see that glide slope moving, and there's the ILS. Uh, if I keep my flight path marker over that little circle, uh, it'll just give me uh, runway alignment. It won't give me glide slope, so I still have to do that on my own. Okay. Now, as I descend here, you can see we're on glide slope, and we're also lined up with the runway. And what I'm trying to do, I'll pause it here again. Actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and... I'll put my gear down first. Good morning, Hornet 11. Cadena approach cleared for landing. Runway 19. -er. Check gear down. Clear for landing. Uh, runway 19. -er, Hornet 1. Gear down. Agree. All right. So as we approach here, let's pause it for a sec, and I'll kind of show you what's going on. There's a lot of turbulence going on as well. Okay, so as we look at the ILS, you can see just by looking at the outside picture, even if, you know, let's say we can see the runway, we're going to try to keep our flight path marker going towards these two kind of lines here. So right now, you can tell that we are slightly right of the runway. This is telling us where the runway uh, alignment is, and this is telling us where our glide slope is. So according to this, we're a little bit if you imagine this flight path indicators are, are kind of our airplane, we're a little bit below this horizontal line, which means we're below glide slope, right? Uh, which is bad. We should should always be on or above. Uh, and then if you look, if this represents the runway, we're a little bit right of the uh, of of the center line of the runway, right? So what do we have to do? Well, we have to climb a little bit, and we also have to make a slight just left turn to try to get back on alignment. So the other thing I'm going to do is, while I have this pause, is I'm also going to uh, hit our little friend here, the wind correction, and I'm going to actually leave that on while we make this final approach. So it, it gives me an indication of where my aircraft is actually going uh, after the wind has you know, pushed my airplane. All right. This is uh, no wind correction, so it's just lined up with the nose of the aircraft, as you can see. This is with wind correction, which means there's a wind from right to left that's pushing our aircraft. All right, so we'll account for that. And that's pretty much as simple as ILS is. You just keep the, uh, you know, your little, if you're below the glide slope, you may add a little bit of power. Hopefully you're on speed. Uh, but right now we're fully visual because we can actually see the runway. And all we're going to do is keep coming down. 
we're a little bit fast we're gonna keep coming down and as we come in we're just gonna let it touch down I gave it a little bit of rudder right before it touched down but and I'm gonna go ahead and deploy the speed brake fully and give it heavy braking here heavy braking now again be aggressive with the brakes two to three second intervals and do not ride the brakes all the way down that means don't give it a you know light pressure all the way down the runway and slow down real gradually just use up the runway if you need it uh, and then give it some you know heavy braking two three seconds and just let it coast down that gives the chance for the brakes to cool down all right uh, and that's again per natops manual uh, they recommend heavy braking for short intervals really heavy braking and we're under 70 so let's go ahead and include those with steering and um, you know they recommend that you don't just give it light to medium braking for prolonged periods of time. Hornet 1 approach, taxi clear of the runway. Hornet 1 clear of the active. Same thing with taxing, you know you want to give it some heavy braking. Alright so that was basically an eyeless approach. Um, I don't want to make it more complicated than that but let's talk about some of the things we've learned. All right. So obviously number one you can see the benefit to using the tack can station because that always points to where the airport is. So let's say um, I wanted to land on a northbound runway, right? Well I know that roughly I'm lined up with north uh, the aircraft is roughly or the airport is roughly to my north so I'm probably going to be s somewhat lined up with that runway, right? And I can kind of fly around the airport. Let's say I'm trying to land on runway 30. Well if this little arrow is over here then I know I'm lined up with, with that runway. Uh, this little arrow as long as you have your tack in uh, entered in is always going to point towards the airport so that's very helpful. Uh, number two we're using ATC vectors. Follow the, follow the ATC's instructions. You can see how close she got us to where we needed to be. Uh, really it was only the last few seconds of the approach that we were actually relying on the ILS because she got us pretty much within I don't know, two, three miles of the final approach lane lined up with our landing runway, which was 19. And then we just use the ILS to refine that all the way down a touchdown. Now you can, if you hit T and you hit and you go to, uh, you know, autonomous approach, you can do that uh, on your own. You can land on whatever runway you, you feel, you know, you need to. Usually it's going to be where the wind's blowing at, blowing in your face, right? Um, but you can see how you can use the tack can. Uh, in combination with, with an ILS sy system to get you back down. All the ILS is, it's, it's radio frequencies. It's one for your glide slope, one for your localizer. And as long as you get those lined up, it's pretty intuitive. If you do it, you know, a couple of times, you'll you'll get exactly what the system does. And, uh, and that's how you get down. So uh, that is a basic introduction to the instrument landing system. Uh, just go out and practice these. The best thing to do is, you know, make it nice, beautiful weather. Um, put in your ILS frequency, right? Uh, you can do like a, a little pattern around an airport, put in your ILS frequency, and just watch the needles, make sure it's powered on, right? Hit the I key. Watch those needles as you make a final approach and see how they react, right? And then once you're comfortable shooting ILS approaches uh, in good weather, then do some bad weather ones, and you'll, you'll see how the system works. They've had these things since World War II. Uh, I think some of the B-17 bombers had them. Uh, the, some of the German aircraft actually had them, so it's not like something new. I think the German aircraft had like a tone system where <laughs> uh, it would, it would uh, beep, I think, if you were veering away from it, and it would give you a nice steady tone as you got aligned with it. So they've been around for quite a while. Anyway, uh, practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. And I'll see you guys in the next video, uh, according to these lessons, which will be an IFR flight from Pusan to Kadena, uh, and it will include ATC vectors and an ILS landing. So hope to join you guys. Hope you guys join me for that one, and I'll see you guys next time.